can handle the rope and yielding to pressure, then I start tying them up. But I don't just tie them hard and fast. What I do is I use my pipe fence and just put my rope around it. Now he can actually pull it if he pulls real hard, but I can pretty much stop him if I want to by pulling the far end. Here Pat's tying Alfred up to a high line. A high line allows the horse to learn what it's like to be tied up without getting in trouble. Because with the high line, the rope's only long enough to allow him to put his head down to the ground, and in this case, eat, but not long enough for him to get tangled up with his feet. Alfred was pretty good with this. He later on experimented to see just how restrictive it was, but he didn't freak out. Once you've got him yielding to the rope a little bit, or even sometimes before you get him yielding to the rope, you can start practicing uh, walk on, woe, and back, just by rewarding those behaviors as the horse follows you around. Here we see Blazette following me in the round pen. Brushing is an important thing to do with the wild horse. It helps them calm down. But the most important thing for wild animals is controllability and predictability. So when you're doing, when you're brushing, you want to be totally predictable. You want to use rhythm. Rhythm in everything helps. But rhythm on your wild horse really makes it a lot easier. Part of the training that we give the horses here at the Mustang Camp is to deal with obstacles and various things in their environment. And this is really the fun part of training because you get to be really creative. So here we're going to take Albert out on a test run. Coco came to us directly from the wild. She still hasn't been freeze branded or been to the um, short term holding facility where she would be put through the shoe and her age estimated. But she did get really sick. And so we had the vet out to look at her and he said that she was two years old. We don't really believe that. <laughs> Here she is. She's been with us for quite a while because she's very highly lateralized. That is, she wants us to be on her right side and she doesn't want us to be on her left side. She's gotten over it quite a bit through some procedures that we did, but we're gonna use her today as a demonstration for our great 
favorite Mustang taming tool, the Mustang Tamer Stick. The way the Mustang Tamer Stick is supposed to be used is much like the long, bam the long pole stick. But you find a place where you can start scratching on the horse and you continue scratching. Some of the best endomorphin releasing places on the horse are their withers, their pole, their forehead, above their tail. along their cheeks, and for the mares on their udders. I'm not going to demonstrate that in this horse. So if you take your stick and apply it generously to your Mustang, I guarantee you'll have a tamer Mustang when you get done. <laughs>